Today I'm going to show you how to record income in QuickBooks Online. In accounting, we call income revenue, which the definition for that is just money earned from selling products and services. There are three ways to record revenues in QuickBooks Online. You can use an invoice, you can use a sales receipt, or you can use a deposit. So here I am in QuickBooks Online. This is a sample company, Craig's Design and Landscape Services. And I'm going to show you the three different ways to record income. So I'm going to go over here on the left and go to Sales. And up here, you'll see a few tabs. Um, first, I'm going to go to the Products and Services tab. You're going to use these items there's already some set up. I'm going to actually edit one for purposes of what I'm doing today. But these are the items that you can pull into the invoice when you're setting one up. So I'm going to use this one called gardening. If I click on edit, it shows me more detail. It shows me what income account this is attached to. So anytime I create an invoice and you choose this gardening product, it is going to be added to the landscaping services income account. So if I go back up here to customers, and today I'm going to use Amy's Bird Sanctuary as an example. Now she already has some transactions here and it looks like she has an open invoice. You can see this one right here. It has an overdue balance of 459. The invoice was $459. The overdue balance is $239. But I'm going to go ahead and create a new transaction up here on the right hand column and I can choose invoice here or I can use this little plus symbol up in the very top right corner and go to customers and invoices but if I'm already in the customer I'm just gonna choose this one and it's gonna automatically pull in the customers information and you can see that there's some billable time over here on the right that I can add to the invoice if I would like to it looks like somebody that works in the company recorded some design time that is billable and then I'm also going to add some gardening services in here as well for $100. So this total invoice is $475. I'm just going to click Save. And you can see that I can receive payment for this invoice right here in the same screen. Or I can close it and receive payment right here or up here under new transaction. So there are several ways to do it. I can also do it up here in the plus icon. Right here is receive payment. But since I'm already in the screen, I might as well just click this right here and receive payment. And let's just assume we're going to receive payment for all the outstanding invoices for $714. If I want to put the payment method, I can do that here. Rule of thumb that I use is I put it in undeposited funds and what this allows me to do is batch together invoices and customer payments into one deposit. Instead of having to deposit things individually, this allows me to batch them together. So I'm going to go back down here and I'm going to do save and close. Okay, so what I just did was I showed in QuickBooks that this customer owes money. We perform services for them by doing the invoice. By receiving the payment, I showed that the customer paid their bill, but I still have not shown this as a deposit yet. I still haven't shown it in the bank account yet. If you go here to accounting, here's the checking account. And if I go to view register, that transaction is not there because I actually have to record it. I have to record the deposit. So I can go back up here to the plus symbol 
and choose bank deposits. And here is Amy's Bird Sanctuary, a payment of $714. And if I want to put more information in here, I can. If I want to put a reference number, such as a check number, I could put that here as well. And if I wanted to deposit all three of these checks at the same time, I could do that too. So let's say I'm going to deposit all these checks for a total deposit of $2,776.52. So I'm going to save and close. And now you can see this deposit here in the checking account or in the checking register. And I can hover over this split and see what items made up that total. Or I could click on it and edit if I want to see more detail. So that's how you use an invoice. Invoicing is probably the way to do it with the most steps. Another way that's a little bit easier is if you go back to the customer, instead of doing an invoice and a payment receipt, you can actually combine those two steps into one by doing a sales receipt. So it just saves a step because you're not creating an invoice and then receiving a payment, you're just creating a sales receipt. So the product and services, these are actually the same items that you would use for an invoice. So you can see the gardening item is right here. And I'm going to say this is $100. And it's going into in undeposited funds. I could change this to the checking account if I want to, but again, I want to be able to put it in undeposited funds so that I can batch it with other payments and make one deposit. And I can choose payment method. I can put a reference number such as a check number or an invoice number or you know, something to that effect. I guess we don't need an invoice number because it's a sales receipt, but you can put whatever information you want in there. Um, there's a save and send. There's also this option in an invoice. You can actually send this to the customer right here to give them a receipt, or you can click on the send later button if you want to send a bunch of sales receipts at one time to a bunch of different customers. But I am just going to save and close. Okay, so that so now we've got this sales receipt right here for $100. And the customer doesn't owe anything up here because they paid their invoice. Sales receipts don't show up here because there's nothing owed. It's assumed that you have the invoice and you have the receipt of payment at the same time. Okay, so I'm going to go back to my checking account register. And you can see that again, that deposit has not been brought into the bank account yet because I have to actually physically add that as a deposit. So I'm going to add it into the checking account. Same, the same way I did with the other payment. Okay, so there it is right there. So that is the second way to do to record receiving money from a customer. The third way is just to do a deposit. The only difference with a deposit, the deposit is definitely the simplest step. So I would just go up here on the plus symbol, go to bank deposit. Over here I would put the customer name. And then for the account, instead of pulling the items from the invoices, it just goes straight into the chart of account accounts such as here's landscape services right here so instead of choosing an item I'm choosing the actual income account so let's say this one was 225 if I want to put a description or a payment method or reference number I can here I can put a memo here if I need to but I'm not going to do that in this example 
I'm just going to save and close. So the only difference between doing it in a deposit, if I go back to the checking account, here's the transaction, here's the deposit, so it immediately shows up in the bank account register, but when I go back to the customer under sales, it actually does not show up on this screen. So if you tend to use this screen, if you tend to go to your customer accounts here and look at the transactions related to them, then you would probably want to do a sales receipt and not just a deposit. But otherwise you can do the deposit because it's the quickest way to do it. Now I'm going to show you a report that's very useful in looking at your income and expenses per customer. It's this profit and loss by customer report. So here's Amy's Bird Sanctuary. What this does is it shows you the income for each customer and if there are any expenses related to that customer it would be down here as well. So if I click on this total income of $1430 it's going to show me all of those items from the invoices and from the sales receipt and from the deposit so they're all going to come into this report no matter which way you record it. I'm going to actually show you a different report though if you go down, there's this report called Sales by Customer Detail and then also Sales by Customer Summary. And I'm going to choose this year to date. Um, here's Amy's Bird Sanctuary. And it is only showing $1,205. So that sale that I showed in the deposit is actually not showing up with this report. So if you use this report, then you might want to consider doing either an invoice or a sales receipt instead of a, just a deposit. I hope that was helpful. If you have any accounting needs, contact me at CoastalCarolinaAccounting.com.